Week 14 of the NHL is pissing off a lot of people. Fan bases want blood, they're pissed at the officiating, coaches are still losing it, and players are pissed that they're scoring goals. A lot went on in the NHL this past week, so let's cover everything that happened this video. Now if you listen very carefully outside your window, you can probably hear the city of Toronto getting prepped for the Stanley Cup parade because William Nylander is a Leaf for the next eight years. He got paid $11.5 million this week for the next eight years, making him the fourth Leaf forward to get $11 million or more. Of course, everyone outside has their doubts, but if you're a Leaf fan, guess what? Who cares? Keep the party going. Everyone's an all-star. The parade is on. Core 4 is activated. Except they've lost back-to-back -back games after blowing two multi-goal leads to the Islanders and the Avalanche. Leaf fans were pissed that the refs didn't call this cross-check on Matthews late in the game. And according to Sheldon Keefe, the ref told him that on this play, Matthews just fell over. I mean, sure, whatever you want to believe, but that should be a penalty. However, blowing a three-goal lead is not the referee's fault. The fans and the coach were pissed, but it's tough love in Toronto and no one feels bad for you. So as of January 14th, 2024, the Leaf Stanley Cup parade is officially cancelled. Now every NHL fan has to thank the Flyers organization for all the chaos this week because things got heated with the Cutter Gauthier trade. The Flyers dealt Gauthier to the Ducks in exchange for Drysdale and a second round pick and initially that came as a massive shock to hockey fans as Gauthier just won gold at the World Juniors and was tied for first in tournament scoring. He was supposed to be a big part of Philly's rebuild, but after Sportsnet's Elliot Friedman broke the news, he provided context to the trade stating that Philly had a lot of trouble meeting with Gauthier at the World Juniors and it was reported that he just didn't want to be a flyer. So the Flyers pulled the trigger on the deal and then chaos ensued in the hockey world. The Flyers had a game against their rival in the Penguins on the same day and pretty much everyone in the Philly organization made it clear that Goche will not be missed. Torch said he didn't know the kid from a hole in the wall and Flyers fans made it very well known that the next time he's in Philly, he's not gonna be treated very well. Philly fans got even more pissed at the kid when they found video evidence of Gauthier saying that his favorite team and player was Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Buddy couldn't have sewered himself harder with that video evidence. Situation got even more complicated when a reporter suggested that former Flyer Kevin Hayes may have influenced Gauthier's decision to be a Flyer. That led to some nasty hate towards Kevin Hayes online, and then Torts went into the post-game presser after a win against Montreal and ripped into the very same reporter. Is the is the guy here? Is there? Doesn't the guy here that that caused Kevin Hayes a problem? Yes. You? Yes. Are you kidding me? You think Kevin Hayes is going to do something like that? It, it just it pisses me off that that you guys throw that around and affect someone's life. No, Kevin Hayes and I had a problem. Uh, we couldn't come to an agreement how to play. That's a good man. That's a good man. And, and what you said is going to stay with him. It'll, it'll, that, that's what you guys don't understand. You say something and you're going to sit there and say you have the right sources. I call Go ahead, I'm sorry. And on a positive note, Jamie Drysdale looks solid in his first two games in Philly, and the Flyers continued to surprise everyone this season, especially after a win over the NHL's best team in the Winnipeg Jets. Now before that, the Jets were on an absolute heater. Eight game win streak and 31 games where they allowed three or less goals against, and this team has four lines that just come at you in waves. We did a deep dive on the channel into what they're doing tactically this season to dominate the NHL, so check out that video after this one. Hopefully, they continue being a wagon and they just don't blow it like they did last year. In shocking news, Connor McDavid has a personality and he went off this week on the league after this goal against the Hawks was called back due to offside. The review took nearly 15 minutes and like McDavid said, if it takes you that long to determine if it was offside or not, then it probably doesn't matter. Ironic though, considering the guy scored this ridiculous goal against the Red Wings where he waits perfectly for his teammate to tag up onside before picking up this puck and proceeding to make everyone else look like they are 10 beers deep into a Sunday night pickup game. I do agree with him though, the challenge review was brought in to fix 
egregious errors, but it's become borderline ridiculous when it takes this long. They likely won't change it though because of sports betting and the need to have every outcome deemed as fair as possible, but implementing something like a 90 second time limit on reviews could be a happy medium. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below on what you think is best. The Oilers also set a franchise record this week after beating Montreal in OT by winning 10 games in a row. Impressive turnaround after firing their head coach this season, but the complete opposite of them right now is the LA Kings. The Kings have lost 8 in a row, and after looking like they could be a troubling team to play in a 7 game series, their defensive game has gone off the rails. As of right now, they are still in a playoff spot, but if they don't tighten up, it could be an epic collapse. Saturday night was one of the busiest nights of the year for hockey with every team in action and we were lucky to witness the toilet bowl between the Sharks and the Senators. This one had the Sharks backup goaltender seemingly falling asleep on the bench and really all we were missing were the Blackhawks barging in halfway through to complete the toilet bowl. It's still astonishing to me how bad Ottawa has been this season. The Sharks we expected even though they're still my future 2023 cup champs but the Sens were supposed to be competitive this year. They squeaked out a win in this one courtesy of this buzzer beater by Tarasenko but man it has just been a rough year for the Sens and their fans. Speaking of underperforming teams how about the Buffalo Sabres? They had the pleasure of playing the Canucks and this game had some bite to it. Zadorov sat down Dylan Cousins then JT Miller caught Deline up high with this hit and the Sabres didn't like that, so there's a nice tilt between him and Johnson to even things up. Demko committed highway robbery in this one, recording a shutout, and the Canucks continue to be one of the best teams in the league by extending their win streak to five games. It was also announced earlier in the week that Connor Bedard got surgery to repair his fractured jaw, and he will miss six to eight weeks, meaning that he's also going to miss out on his first All-Star game. That's a damn shame considering how much buzz he was creating for the league, but on the bright side, that is a blessing in disguise for the kid as he doesn't have to wear the NHL's Dorito themed all-star jerseys. Glad to know this year's all-star game is sponsored by Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. Now if you're in the Eastern Conference, you should be very afraid if you have to go up against the Florida Panthers. Sam Reinhardt has always been a solid player, but this year he's been a man possessed. He recorded his 30th goal of the season in this OT thriller by scoring with 0.07 seconds left. And right now, the Panthers are rolling. This team was a wagon before Kachuk was feeling it. Now he's averaging two points a game in his last eight. We saw last year what this team can do in the playoffs with their play style. And if they catch fire heading into April again, they will become the favorites to come out of the East. Keep an eye out on the channel this week for an in-depth breakdown on the Florida Panthers. Now here's a live look at what happens when you bet the under in a game and end up having to score a goal. Pavel Buchnevich of the Blues pots the empty netter and is absolutely pissed about it. The Blues are the definition of a bubble team right now as they are fighting for a wild card spot. They've been floating around the 500 mark in their last 10 games and they were able to pick up a point in an OT loss to the Bruins this weekend. Now, How about this save here by Antti Ranta on Sid the middle aged man. Unbelievable effort and great to see after he got sent to the AHL on a conditioning stint to work on his game. After being down by two, the Penguins scored in the final minute of play in this one to force overtime but the Canes would hang on to win and continue to stay hot in their last 10 after a slow start. Some other news around the league was that the Worm himself and Corey Perry may make a return to the NHL. Elliot Freeman reported that Perry met with Bettman and was cleared to sign with a new team. We don't know what happened off the ice but if Perry joins a contender you just know that he's going to find a way to make an impact in the playoffs. The Seattle Kraken also set a franchise record after beating the Columbus Blue Jackets 7-4, marking the first nine-game win streak in franchise history. The team has their mojo back from last season, and if they keep it up, they're going to be right there in the playoffs playing spoiler yet again. Quick check on the standings, the Vancouver Canucks are now on top of the NHL, while the San Jose Sharks are still at the bottom. Kucherov and McKinnon are going toe to toe for the MVP trophy this season and Matthews still leads the NHL in goals. So did anything piss you off or surprise you this week in the NHL? Let us know in the comments down below and if you want to see some of our deeper breakdowns from earlier this week, make sure you click on any of the videos right here and subscribe for more future hockey content.